The wait is finally over, my friends, and today we're back with the Hunter and the Beast DLC. So on this first day, we have been given permission to post a Lizardmen multiplayer battle. So here we are with the Lizardmen led by Nakai the Wanderer, facing off against the Tomb Kings, who are going to be helmed by Satra the Imperishable. So without further ado, guys, let's jump right into this match and have some fun. So as far as the build goes, we're going to be going with a bit of a Croxagore rush build. So we do have Nakai here in the middle, who is an absolute beast. Probably one of my favorite characters or units in the entire DLC. Just look how big and thick he is. He's just so awesome. But as far as his abilities go, let's go ahead and take a look here. and Let's find it. And there we go. So he does have the Primal Roar. Now, this ability is incredibly powerful. It's kind of like the Madness of Kane. It does rampage in your nearby troops, but it also gives them 22% physical resist and 44 melee attacks. So the place to really use this is in big alpha strikes. So if you're coming in with like horn ones or like a big fight, that's really going to determine the outcome of the game, this is a great ability to pop, right? Because no one's going to be pulling out, you're staying the course, you're trying to win it, and it's very good. On top of that, it's pretty good in the front line because Saurus aren't the most maneuverable of units, so typically Saurus are going to be fighting and just grinding out in the front line. So if you want your Saurus to be a little bit more effective and durable, you come up with Nakai, you pop that buff, and you know, just profit. It's pretty great. So the front line is going to be mostly Saurus. Now, as far as new units, because I know that's what you guys are here for, we're going to be going, like I said, with the Croxagore Rush. So these are the sacred Croxagores. These are the new bad boys in the town here, and they are very, very good. So firstly, they do magic damage. So there's a multitude of matchups. This one, for example, the Tomb Kings often do use Narrow's Incantation of Protection to give physical resist to their units. These guys are going to be able to circumvent that. So regular Croc scores are a little bit more focused on infantry, but these guys are more of a generalist unit. I mean, they're stronger overall. Just better stats. 36 melee attack is much better than the standard Croc scores. 120 weapon strength, and they just look like absolute linebackers when they charge, which is very cool. So in total, we have two of those guys to have two, two sacred croc scores. Yeah, one's going to be here and one on the far side over here. And these guys are just going to be bull rushing on the flanks and trying to get some good value. And of course, they're going to be led by Nakai here in the middle. And we do have a couple other heroic units. So Sora Scar Veteran is very good against Tomb Kings. People love using Ushapti Great Bows against dinosaurs because of how good they are against big armor. So basically, I get the Scar Veteran, I juke out the arrows, and you're able to mitigate a lot of that damage actually by just juking. And then from there, you just chase the Ushapti Great Bows into the Shadow Realm. The front line is going to be Saurus and Skinks. And on the far side, we do have the Paco Paco in Vanguard deployment, going to be coming in, trying to get up on Tomb of Shopti or Tomb Scorpions or stuff like that. So that's pretty much it for my build. And for the forces of Dob plays, he's going to be playing the Tomb Kings in the showcase battle. He has Skeleton Horsemen, who Shopti Great Bows are pretty standard for sure. Great armor piercing, great range, very solid against big dinos. I mean, if they were to focus down to Kai, for example, that could do some really good work. But it looks like he is going to be going after the Sacred Croc scores on this flank. On top of that, he's got Skeleton Warriors just into the sunset. I think there's a couple Tomb Guard mixed in. No, it looks like it's mostly Skeleton Warriors. So he's going to be going for uh, the real, you know, bang for his buck in terms of Construct. So three Shopty Great Bows, Double Tomb Scorpion, Setra up here, which Setra is a beast on this thing. And one of the better duelists in the game, actually, because if you do cast the Cursed Blades, if you guys haven't seen the spell, and uh, yeah, to Jaff's Incantation of Cursed Blades, it does give 22% uh, weapon damage, armor piercing damage. It's very, very good. It makes him an absolute monster. So Cetra's going to be coming in. Definitely some very scary stuff, and we'll see how that goes. So guys, hopefully you enjoy this uh, new game. And also, just to mention, there's going to be tons of new stuff coming out, like Empire, all kinds of good stuff over the uh, course of the next week. So stay tuned for that, guys, and let's have some fun in this battle. So Nakai's going to be going in, just straight up linebacker mode. He's very tanky, very similar to like Throg in terms of like mass and presence on the battlefield. He, of course, can't heal, but he has some really, really good buffs. And I actually don't know if we took a look at those. So let's actually go check here. Nakai does have, yeah, I think we totally skipped those. But the Primal Roar, like I said, he does also have the Miasma of Despair, which uh, Negative 8 leadership, 24% speed, lowers vigor, which is really good. Plus, he does have this really, really good item. And also, there's a little bit of a bug in the game right now, which will be getting fixed rather quickly, which makes it so uh, when you hover over one of these things, it actually has a little bit of a lag spike, but that'll be gone in like the next day or two. Uh, golden Tributes here, it does give perfect vigor to all nearby troops. Such a powerful spell. Vigor is extremely underrated, so... Yeah, that's pretty much it. All right, let's do it. So frontline fight is going to be underway. Sacred Croc scores are just going to be bull rushing here, just looking absolutely awesome. But again, Setra is going to be just taking out a ton of skinks. So realizing this is a bit of a scary fight, I decided to rush these guys in to fight this uh, scorpion over here. So they're going to be piling into the scorpion with their giant hammer fist here. These are very ham-handed. You know, they have some really cool attack animations. So they're going to be hunting the scorpion with the cohort. But in the front, I know you guys want to see some Nakai action. So Nakai is going to be kind of rotating over here. And man, when he runs, he actually sometimes like swings his weapon into the ground. And it looks so cool. The Sora Scar Veteran needs to shut down the Ushapti Great Bow because they're just going to be doing huge value. And if I just let them sit, it's going to be a lot of damage. Windblast going down here in the front is going to be melting some Skeleton Spears, which is quite nice. And we have a pretty big pit fight over here. Cetra is actually taking quite a bit of damage from the Croc scores, despite being very tanky. And you can also see that this uh, Tomb Scorpion is taking a little bit of poke. But now that the Tomb Kings have some reinforcements nearby, and they're going to be piling in with these Scorpions here, or these spears, excuse me, I mean, scorpion spears, all the same thing, right? They got stingers. Uh, we're going to be falling back. We don't want that fight. So we're going to be taking these guys, uh, just looping up and around the top here, and then the duel of duels. Here it comes. Look at him just beating his weapon into the ground. That's so awesome. 
So yeah, we have Setra versus Nakai here, and Nakai is a very powerful duelist. He's incredibly tanky, and you guys will notice, even though he's in a 2v1 fight here versus Scorpion and Setra, he is going to last a long time. So Harmonic Convergence is going to be going down to make him a little bit tankier, and he's going to be turning and attacking Setra here just in just a moment. Basically, I was trying to get him back to the Saurus Warriors to help out. In the meantime, Dov does run a screen up here on the high ground with the Skeleton Horseman Archers, and he's able to kind of screen me out, but the linebackers are coming in, and they're just going to just gorilla pound these guys, just going to be doing a ton of work. Yeah, they have some really cool charge animations for sure. And it's like when they actually, one of their animations you guys can see here is when they hit the, they hit the ground to knock up a rock and then they like beat the rock into the face of their opponent, which is so cool. So right there, we're melting through the front line relatively well, but it's a very, very close fight, guys. In the meantime, Sora Scar Veteran in the back is going to be hunting down the Chosen of the Gods, and they've done a really good job just hunting these Ushapti down. Nakai is going to continue dueling here, and uh, I think I was trying to run for a second, but I decided just to just turn around and fight. And Nakai is going to be in this monstrous duel versus Setra, which is great. This is what we signed up for, right? But he does get knocked over. He lays down on his belly just completely flat. It's like, I need to rest my eyes for a moment. But he's going to pop up pretty quick here, and you can see that Setra is going to be summoning some uh, Ushapti to his cause. So suddenly a very scary fight. I do use the Primal Roar to get physical resist and melee attack, which does rampage him, unfortunately, but I figured him being durable here was a little bit more important. But the Saurus were able to easily win those infantry fights with the support of the Wind Blast spell, which I was using from the Lord of Heavens. So Nakai is going to be just, you know, he's in a tough situation, but that's what he's for. He's meaty, he's going to be able to kind of tank it while you take out other threats. In the back line, some of these croc scores are kind of uh, just juking up around the skeletons. And these guys are pretty quick. 46 speed, and yeah, once they get on those Ushapti, it is going to be a disaster for those guys. So just trying to juke those guys out. Ushapti Grapo is still putting some good fire into the Sora Scar Veteran, but for the most part, if I if I just leave these guys to shoot, they're going to be able to just tee off on all my troops. So though Nakai is taking a beating alone down there, I feel like this is necessary and it must be done. Over here, we still have some sacred croc scores who have incredible leadership, and those guys are just going to be rushing up the high ground. They were able to clean out those skeleton horsemen archers, and now these guys are going to be pushing up the hill, and hopefully they'll do some pretty good damage here against some of these bigger threats. Tomb Scorpion's going to be holding back the tide, but I don't mind kind of getting a surround there and potentially finishing him off. And down here, Nakai is still going strong. You can see here that the Ushapti Summon is uh, afflicted by the Miasma of Despair, which I don't think that's activated. Let's actually go ahead and take a look. It looks like it just like activated for a short period of time, but anyways, we'll take a look uh, here in a second. So duration of 16 seconds, and it's a hex instantly affects it. Okay, so that's affecting everyone. And Nakai has an AoE slow. I mean, just so much utility on this guy. So he's going to be coming in with his paddle, doing some pretty good spanking against Setra here. And uh, I mean, Setra does have the Blessed Blade of Betra, but nonetheless, he is holding firm, has incredible leadership, has been in a tough situation this entire battle, and he is just, I think Nakai is going to be super competitive. I mean, he's just durable, he has really good buffs, really, really good battlefield presence, and uh, certainly no joke. Over here up on the high ground, the Soros Garbredon was able to finish off the Ushapti, and we do have another pit fight down here. So the uh, Sacred Croxagores here are going to continue their pounding here of these uh, these skeletons, just beating the rocks into them, which is pretty great. Just look at this. Such cool animations. The other Croxagores are going to be hunting down the Ushapti Grapos here. I have 46 speed against our 54, so they're a little bit faster, but if they turn to shoot for even a second, I'm going to catch them. Down here in the low ground, again, a very, very scary situation. The Kai the Wanderer is afflicted by, or buffed by Cold Blood. So Cold Blood is going to keep him going. I just wanted to make sure that he didn't get, like, you know, terror routed or pushed off or, you know, just break, you know, based on leadership. And he does get punted a little bit there, but, you know, he's, he's a durable lad. So here I realize there's a pretty big threat. This is really the make or break moment of the game here. I'm a little bit behind on the bounce of power. So Nakai has been in a, a very just fierce cockfight, etc. And here we do have the Sora Scar Veteran who's going to be coming in. And now it is time. This is vengeance. This is like in all those like movies when you know the sidekick comes to like kind of rescue the hero who's been in a losing fight. And here it comes. So the Sora Scar, the Sora Scar Veteran is going to be popping cold blood going in on Setra the Imperishable, who does have a bonus for his large right now because of the overcast effect, which makes him so scary. But Setra the Imperishable is uh, having a little bit of trouble. The Scar Veteran is able to do a ton of damage. And Nakai, of course, is a pretty steady presence here, just pushing in. We have a ton of support coming in. The infantry and here comes Nakai to deliver the death blow just coming in with the oh the big overhand slobber knocker just clubbing the side of Setra. Setra is in huge trouble and Nakai and his sidekick here of the Sora Scar Veteran are able to get that huge just lethal blow there on Setra and suddenly the game is very very different. Balance of power normalizes and I do get the Miasma of Despair which is going to be lowering speed and vigor and all that good stuff and uh, yeah you can see here that's that's incredible I mean just the utility of being able to slow monstrous things so powerful leadership as well is pertinent against undead factions because it can potentially uh, make them crumble faster so the Scarvet's going to be battling here and the guy's going to be coming over oh look at him just beating his club against the ground and he's coming in for the Ushapti Great Bows oh and the three for one club coming up and over the top absolutely heavy metal dinosaur so as far as the rest of the battlefield goes, Bounce of Power for the first time of the game is kind of going in my favor a little bit here. The Scar Veteran and the Tomb Scorpion have been dueling just Clash of Fates right here, but the Sora Scar Vet is able to pull out the glorious victory, and he chants triumphantly as he breaks off the battlefield, raising his spear. He's like, yo, Nakai, I'm going to go back to the to the den and just kind of hang out. You do your thing. So Nakai's going to be surging, uh, surging in here with his goon squad, and look at these guys, just hammer fists. 
And yeah, when a guy gets really close to his uh, target that he's going to be attacking, he kind of starts to swing his uh, his beat stick on the ground and like club it against the ground. It is so cool. I mean, so thematic and, and just impactful looking, right? So here it comes. Look, there's there's the animation. Oh, he's going to be clubbing some of these skeletons, and then he comes in with like an animation usually as he gets in there. But the skeletons are like, you know what? I don't feel like fighting that guy. Let's go ahead and crumble and call it a day. So the Croc Score Goon Squad is going to be afflicted, or <laughs> afflicted, not afflicted, I keep saying that, buffed by the Primal Roar, which gives them 22% physical resist and melee attack, and those guys are going to be pushing up and just rampaging towards the nearest target, which just so happens to be a pretty good target. So the Ushapti Great Bow here are certainly going to be taking a beating. This little Skink Priest, though, has been a hero all game. I mean, the Wind Blasts have been MVPs, but more importantly, he's been just kind of harassing these uh, these Chosen of the Gods. And Setra kind of had to deal with the uh, you know the big old Nakai in the middle, otherwise he would have just ran shop, right? Sacred Croxors and company are going to be chasing down the Ushapti, who are going to be, you know, there's still a very, very slim chance, probably not much of one, but if the Scorpion can get some good tear routes, and if the Great Bows, for example, could fire, like, unimpeded and pick off the Nakai, but he's cold-blooded. And uh, he's coming in. He's got uh, 59 leadership despite being like 600 HP. So that's what's so good about Lizardmen. The leadership is just insane. So right here, the Croc score is going to be going to Pound Town here on this uh, Tomb Scorpion. And Akai is going to be coming in as well. And he's going to be giving buffs, debuffs to the opponent. Just all kinds of good stuff coming in. So the Shopee Great Bows are going to be crumbling here in a second. As is the Tomb Scorpion, although Nakai looks like he took a little bit of damage, but for the most part he should be good. And you'll notice that like everyone near Nakai is like, look at this. Nakai is uh, himself is fresh. The Sacred Croc scores are fresh. The Skank is, is fresh. So that perfect vigor is just ludicrous. I mean, such a good buff. And if we take a look right here, you can see it's within 30 meters. So they have to be close to him. But that's still like a huge game-changing mechanic in the late game. Because units being tired or fatigued, uh, fatigue has huge penalties. Like huge penalties. So well played to Dog. That was actually a really close game. And it really came down to that epic pit fight between Nakai and Cetra. In which Nakai, you know, he was like, he was like, you know, Rocky. Just taking the blows, you know, he, he loses the first fight. And uh, he comes back and wins the second one when he does have the help of Mick. Maybe we'll start calling the Soros Scar veteran Mick. Like, it'll be his trainer, but... Yeah, you know, I wanted to kind of try a more focused build using the Kai the Wanderer with the Sacred Croc scores. Against Tomb Kings, there are some other new units that I think have some potential. Maybe the, uh, the Razor Dawn packs might. I mean, they have pretty good AP values, but I wanted to go with the Croc score rush and kind of keep it focused. As such, I brought Nakai plus the two uh, Sacred Croc scores. And don't worry, guys, over the course of the next week, uh, we'll be showing you guys builds with everything. There's going to be builds coming in with... Uh, you know, the new, all, every new unit. You guys will be seeing it. But in this match, I wanted to focus on Croc scores. Hopefully you guys enjoyed seeing Nakai in action. I know there wasn't a ton of new units in terms of like just using everything, but fear not guys, the Dread Saurian cometh. And there's most certainly a really good replay of him coming up and it, it's going to be fun. But I wanted to open up with the Croc scores and Nakai and really show you guys what they could do because, you know, bringing the Dread Saurian against all this focus fire would have been pretty tough. Like it would have died very, very quickly and wouldn't have been that fun of a replay. So, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Make sure to check out Dov Plays. He's an outstanding YouTuber. There will be a link to his, uh, his goodies in the comment section below. He's going to be putting up all kinds of stuff as well. And I can assure you, him and I had some very, very close good battles. So stay tuned for that. And uh, the Huntsman approaches perhaps. See you guys soon and take care. So in the first video today, you guys got to see the Sacred Croxagors and Nakai, but in this video, we're going to be showing you what everyone's been waiting for, which is the Dread Saurian. So as far as the variant goes, we're going to be going with the second tier of the Dread Saurian. So there is the Feral version, which is relatively cheap, but of course it rampages. And for such a big beast, I want to have control. You know, I want to be able to do whatever I want, just, you know, go to town and have some fun. So we do have the second tier of the Dread Saurian. Now, he costs about 3,400 gold, I think. And the big Dread Saurian, like the big Papa Regiment of Renown, which I think is called like the Destroyer of Lustre or something like that. We'll take a look after the game, perhaps. But that thing costs almost 4,000 gold. So I felt like it was a little bit expensive to kind of uh, you know invest everything in that bad boy because I figured my opponent here, the great job plays, would have some anti-large threats. And Giants actually did get a cost reduction. So there are a multitude of multiplayer changes in terms of the costs of various units and the Chaos Giants, and I believe the Beastmen Giants are just Giants in general for Norska, Chaos Beastmen, etc., etc., all got cost reductions, which is quite cool. So the Dread Saurian certainly could have his hands full, but let's go ahead and take a look at this bad boy. So firstly, he's got 52 melee attack, which is pretty high for a monster. So he's going to be able to make contact with whatever he's hitting for the most part, but he has relatively low melee defense and 10.5k HP. So about the same as I think the Soul Crusher and some of the bigger Mammoths from Norska do have around that much HP. So similar in that ballpark, low melee defense, of course, but good armor. So he has 100 armor, so small arms fire like non-armor piercing bows like Goblin Archers and, you know, Marauder Horsemen who don't have the throwing axes aren't going to do too much damage to him. So he should be okay in that respect. But the big thing is his weapon strength. I mean, this guy, if you buff him up with various buffs, I mean, there are ways to put him up over a thousand weapon strength pretty easily if you have the right lore of magic. So he can certainly, you know, crump some gits, but he's very vulnerable. Despite the fact that he looks tanky, this guy can go down very quick and is, uh, you know, easy to drag down if you're not careful. But he does have 60 speed, so he's faster than a lot of other monsters. You can see the giant has 39. I think some of the sphinxes and things like that are in that same ballpark. So the Dread Saurian can certainly hustle. 
Now for the rest of the build, we're going to be showcasing the other new units because again, in the first video, you guys got to see the uh, Sacred Croxagores and Akai, but here we're going to be using these bad boys. So we do have the Razor Dawn Hunting Pack. So these guys have pretty much, uh, you know, Salamanders are the anti-large low AP variant, and these guys are the ones that do more armor piercing. So pretty good against armored units. Uh, something that I need to test out a little bit more, but you know, I suppose if they set on infantry that aren't shielded, for example, or even if they're shooting like a big armored monster, like a Shagath, they will do okay damage. So 46 weapon strength in melee, so they can fight AP infantry as well in the late game. They cause fear, and it looks like they have 62 missile damage with, I assume, pretty good AP values. So let's go ahead and take a look here. And let's pop it like it's hot, and it looks like it's going to be, uh, yeah, 17 AP. Certainly not bad. So we're going to pause this while we go over the rest of the new units here. We do have the Amexon Barbs. So these guys are the Regiment of Renown of the Razor Dawn Hunting Packs. And basically, they're, they're better stat lines across the board, but on top of that, they also have Poison. So we're going to be seeing how that goes, and it looks like they both do Rampage. So yeah, this is very much going to be kind of a, a kiting just build that's very dependent on protecting the Dread Saurian. So the Dread Saurian is going to be the anchor. We do also have some horned ones. I believe two groups of horned ones. Now, on top of all these different new units, there are new slons. So you can see here in the back, we do have a slon mage priest of life. So if we're going to be coming in with the you know big old Dread Saurian and these beasts that need healing, I feel like he's going to be a very good choice. We have the life slon with regrowth and earth blood and shield of thorns. We also do have an ancient salamander, which is very, very exceptional at taking out chaos infantry. And uh, that's pretty much it, aside from some skinks in the back. So these guys are just going to be hanging back here and, uh, you know, hoping that the Amexon Barbs and these Horn Ones and all these other guys can do some good work. Now, for the forces of Dov, a very cool army. He's got Marauders, Chaos Warriors, Mirror Guard, Double Chaos Giant, which really caught me off guard. I was expecting, like, Shagus and things like that, but he's got the Double Beatdown Giant, which is going to be quite scary. Archeon Never Chosen, plus these Swords of Chaos. Now, the Swords of Chaos have had a pretty substantial cost reduction, so perhaps you'll be seeing them more. And, I mean, they're not a bad unit. It was really just their cost. So let's see how those bad boys do. So the battle's underway here, and the uh, the barbed spitters here are going to be going in, shooting at the mirror guard, but they do have silver shield, so it's not going to be huge damage, but basically just getting some light poking, a little bit of harass, and the dread saurian's going to be shooting its pipe. So it does have like a pipe launcher on the top here, which you can see does some okay poke, and actually do slip up here in the beginning. So Dob is able to get a really good charge on me, but the horn ones are somewhat durable, but they're going to be fighting back here and realizing I'm, I'm not going to be able to get away. I mean, I could run, but then I'll probably just get rampage, I'll take more damage, I'm like, all right, let's just stand and fight. So realizing that situation over there was pretty bad. The Dread Saurian. This is what you guys are here for. He's coming. He's coming for these Marauders. Oh man, he's going to be feasting on their souls. Just beautiful, beautiful stuff there coming in from the Dread Saurian. So he's pretty good at, you know, mulching down these infantry. And obviously he causes terror. So he's going to be able to buckle them rather quickly. But Zoff is able to get some hounds around the back. And the hounds do jump on top of my Salamanders here. The Razor on Hunting Bags, excuse me. So I'm going to be turning and fighting with those guys. And Archeon is actually going to be chasing my Ancient Salamanders. So a lot of very bad situations out of the gates here. Horn ones are taking a beating, but with the regrowth, they're actually fighting rather long and doing okay damage considering the circumstances. And here, the Razor Dawn hunting packs are showing their prowess in melee. Really not bad. They're able to actually fight back these dogs, and I do pull some skinks from reserve and use the Blood Statue of Spite for my life slime back here to kind of peel these guys off. So for the most part, I'm not going to take too many casualties here. They have 90 armor, so they're going to be very tough for these hounds to kind of chew down. On the far side, the Dread Saurian is in a 2v1 fight, which is not a good situation. Now, one-on-one, -on -one, it could probably eat a giant. 2v1, two giants will almost certainly have a good chance here, plus the Mirror Guard on the ground kind of poking and shanking. So I'm going to be running away. The one strength of the Dread Saurian, one real big strength, aside from its weapon strength, is how you know fast it is. 60 speed is no joke. We're going to be trying to get away, but it seems like he keeps kind of getting interrupted and mucked up by units here, so a little bit of scary stuff here from the Dread Saurian. Now, back in the main fight, in the back, you can see the Swords of Chaos have engaged, but I did have a second group of Horn Ones that I did not screw up with, and those guys are going to be countercharging the Swords of Chaos as I do drop a shield of the old ones here, which is going to be giving that nice physical resist, or uh, ward save against all types of damage, and leadership to my units here. Now, the Dread Saurian in a bad situation, those Giants really putting a number on it, so well played a job. I mean, a very unorthodox pick. But the Dread Saurian taking a beating there, so very, very, uh, very scary situation. In the meantime, my uh, Skinks are going to be just taking a beating for the old ones, not having a great time, and I do get a pretty good banishment here on the Marauders and some of these infantry. And the Horn Ones are going to be trying to hold back this Tide of Chaos, but the Swords of Chaos have only lost one model so far. They're up to 19 kills, so now I really need to kind of devolve into a bit of a kiting situation, which is what my build was designed for in the first place. So we're going to be getting the Amexon Barbs and our other kind of uh, uh, spitters here, as I call them, the uh, Razor Dawn Hunting Packs. Still getting used to the names, guys, so bear with me. But they're going to be shooting in at the Giant. You know, it's not going to be like big damage like a Salamander would be with their anti-large bonus, for example, but we're going to be kind of poking and weaving and using the Dread Saurian with its blowpipes in the back while we heal it up. So we're going to be using Earth Bloods and other effects, but still the Dread Saurian does have pretty good missile attacks here with its little ballistas up top. So we're just going to be shooting in, trying to hold back the Tide of Chaos and doing damage wherever we can. On top of that, we do also have an Ancient Salamander. Ancient Salamander, of course. Don't forget about him. He is he is old news now, but he's still quite good. So he's up to 52 kills, and he's just been, you know, shooting for balls into this formation and are spitting up for balls and doing pretty good job against the yeah, Mirror Guard and some of these other troops. But obviously, my Skinks aren't going to be holding up that long. So we do have to devolve into a bit of a, a retreat situation. 
And you can see our little hunting packs here are getting some okay damage, but they don't seem to do that much, like, just overall, like, big damage. It seems like there's something that's more meant for, like, long grindy engagements where they kind of whittle you down over time. Granted, perhaps I'll do some testing with them. And if you guys are interested in seeing testing with these guys, let me know. I could test their DPS against, like, some other similar units. Here, we do have the Dread Sonorian. He's going to be falling back as well. So the Giants are very slow. So this is my advantage here. I have a Salamander fighting here. I have some Horned Ones in the back. Eight of these guys able to take out those Hounds. And the Chaos Army, aside from the Giants, is very beat up. Archeon's no joke, though. He does have 5,000 HP, which I don't know if they buffed that, but I don't remember it being quite that high. But the Giant here is going to be taking a lot of darts, and thankfully the Amexon Barbs, the Regiment of Renown of these guys, the Razor on Hunting Packs, do also have a Poison Shot. So they are able to Poison the Giant, kind of slow its advance. And I really know here, I'm like, okay, the Swords of Chaos are going to be the biggest issue, like, because nothing else here can catch me. I have relative impunity if the Swords of Chaos are off the battlefield. So I'm kind of just pulling back, waiting with my Horn Ones and the Dread Saurian, getting ready for an Alpha Strike here. I'm going to be trying to shoot in and go after the Swords of Chaos here. And you can see an Earthblood going down, which does catch a couple of my very powerful units here. So we're just going to kind of keep pulling Archeon away from the Giants. In the meantime, my Salamanders here, or not Salamanders, goddammit, the Razor Dawn Hunting Packs, are going to be charging in and feasting on Rotters. And with their 90 armor and, of course, their good uh, kind of weapon strength. They should be able to chew on these Marauders relatively efficiently. So the Hunting Pack doing quite good there. Those Razor Dons get nice and spiky-like. And the Dread Saurian has come into combat here. It's going to be fighting against Archeon, plus all these troops here. So at the very least, it's been a damage bunch this game. It's been taking a lot of work, but now that the Giants are here, it probably doesn't want to stay in fight. The Giants are pretty healthy, so this guy turns pretty quick, too. Uh, actually, I think that was an attack animation, but yeah, he actually turned around relatively quickly. Usually those like big single entities take quite some time to turn. So the Horned Ones are going to be fighting. They're shaken. Terrified right now, so they will be coming back in a moment. But the Dread Saurian has plenty of ammunition. So we're going to be pulling back here, sending in Skinks to kind of tarpet things. And our Salamanders on the far side, taking advantage of our mobility and our kind of a, our uh, reptilian speed here. We're going to be kind of chewing on these scraps, basically just trying to pick Dob's army apart. We have a couple Skinks coming in here as well. Banishment is going to be going down. And the Dread Saurian will be jumping in here and again in a second with an Earthblood. And he has, you know, 3,000 HP, despite the fact that he looks very low. And he's going to be fighting Archeon, so Archeon never chosen versus the glorious Dread Saurian in Mortal Kombat. And Archeon takes a huge punch to the face from the Dread Saurian, so the Noble Beast has done well here. The Giants catch up, and I'm like, man, let's just kind of pull back, take advantage of our speed. And that's the, like I said, that's the real hidden strength of the Dread Saurian. Yes, it's a pretty powerful monster in straight-up fights, but I think its speed is going to be something like in its battlefield, you know, mobility. You wouldn't think to hear that, but this thing is actually really, really quick. So Skinks are going to be jumping in. We're sacrificing these Skinks to kind of hold back the Tide of Chaos a little bit longer. And I was really impressed with how long the Skinks were holding against, like, Giants and Elite Chaos Infantry. And you can even see Archeonics here cleaving some of these guys. So I was really surprised about that. But one Giant is getting danger low, and we are cleaning up the backfield. The Razor on Hunting Packs are doing a good job. Our Ancient Salamander, Sally, as we'll call her, is doing a great job chasing off the Chaos Supporting Troops. So despite the fact that, you know, he invested a lot in the Brute Force, we do have a huge advantage in the mobility game. But the Dread Saurian here is taking a bit of a beating from the Giants. Cold-Blooded has been popped. The Giants have incredibly high melee attack. 69 is very, very good. And of course, it is able to, uh, you know, surpass the 29 melee defense of the Dread Saurian relatively easily. So Earthblood's going to be going down. Skinks are surging back in, and I cannot believe these little Skinks are just holding these guys back and really just allowing my uh, Razor Dawn hunting packs to shoot in there and wear down those Giants. So for the first time in the battle, I do kind of pull back up into the reins here with the Bounce of Power. I mean, I was down for quite some time with that really bad uh, kind of play in the beginning, losing my uh, Horn Ones. You do also drop a Blood Statue of Despite, trying to get rid of the Swords of Chaos because they are giving Archeon Guardian, so I don't want him to be, you know, even tankier than he already is. And the first Giant's going to be going down here. You can see the Razor Dawn's just peppering into this Giant with their dart, uh, their barbed darts here, certainly doing quite a bit of damage. The other ones are going to be shooting against Archeon and the Dread Saurian, thinking about charging in here, but of course I have Archeon Poison, but Archeon's going to be able to catch me here, so he's going to be going after the uh, Slot Mage Priest of Life here. And, uh, you know, going to be trying to get back and drop some heals. The Dread Saurian is going to be coming in for the big old punch. Archeon has 1,500 HP. Dread Saurian just clubs him in the dome piece, doing like 700 damage, give or take. And it looks like the Lord of the End Times might be falling to the Dread Saurian. Is he going to go? The Dread Saurian bites, but it looks like it gets distracted as another giant falls. And it looks like Archeon, the Ever Chosen, is going to be wavering and breaking as the wrath of the Dread Saurian knows no bounds. And the Lord of the End Times most certainly in a lot of trouble here. And at this point, I pretty much can just chase off uh, Archeon with a Salamander, but the Dread Saurian is going to break. Oh, and it goes down after all that hype. But you know what, little buddy or big buddy? You did good. Don't don't hang your head in shame. That was a great battle, and it was certainly a lot of fun for uh, him, I'm sure. Archeon's going to be fighting the Salamander, but, you know, the Salamander's not a pushover in combat. But more importantly, Archeon is going to be taking a ton of shots coming in here from the Razor Dawn packs, some of these other units, and, uh, yeah... I mean, these Razor Dawn packs could easily probably chew up these Chaos Infantry, especially with the support of the Salamander, as he was able to break Archeon. So that's pretty much game right there. Both Dob and I were kind of like, yeah, it's game right now. So we'll just call it here as Archeon does break out. So you guys got to see the Dread Soaring. The Beast was hunted, but not before. He caused quite a bit of a, a discord on the battlefield.
outfield and can definitely cause some problems. But, you know, of the new units, I think that the Dread Saurian probably is the least competitive, but it's certainly a very fun unit and its mobility does give it a lot of potential for, you know, certain... Maybe the Feral version is going to be more cost effective because they are very expensive, guys. Like, it's over 3,000 gold for something that would probably lose to the Sphinx of Usef. It's like, I don't know if that's worth it. Yeah, it, it, but it's such a fun unit. So, and, and again, this is so early. I don't think it's really going to be known until we see it played in like tournaments and things like that. But the Razor Dawn packs were okay. Uh, not a ton of kills, but you know, steady incremental damage. And it seems like they have a ton of ammo compared to the Salamanders. Like I was shooting them the entire game and they still had a lot of ammo at the end. So that is probably one of their biggest strengths. Not as much of a burst unit, but more of a slow and steady kind of a race winner there. So Horn Ones did good. Obviously I had a huge mistake there and Dov caught me off guard. The Ancient Salamander is always an MVP. And of course having the Slime Age Priest of Life is quite good. I have a feeling that when the actual build comes out, they're going to be changing him to like a green salon. I don't know. Something to think about. But, um, but yeah, the Dread Soaring was fun, I have to say. And it did okay. It was able to get a couple big Alpha Strikes on Archeon. I mean, it was running for the most part, but I still think it's one of the weaker units in the DLC for Dinos in terms of... In Campaign, it's going to be a beast because it's going to be like Unchained, right? But in multiplayer, it is very expensive. So that's something to think about. I mean, I still don't think it's... I don't know. I have, to, I have to develop an opinion on it by playing it in more matchups and more games. And Dob obviously brought a very fun build as well. We got to see Archeon, we got to see Double Giants, and he was able to fit in quite a bit more because Swords of Chaos plus Giants all had cost reductions. So certainly a very cool thing. And I can't wait to just go through all of that and look at the cost reductions once the patch notes come out. So guys, thank you so much for watching this glorious Lizardmen vs. Warriors of Chaos showdown, this uh, two for one. And we'll see you guys next time. Take care.